In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, good people of God. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Wednesday, the 13th of November, 2024. It is Wednesday of the 32nd week in Ordinary Time, Church Ye B. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 23, the response to the psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. A meditation is drawn from the gospel text. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered the village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Let gratitude be the dress that you wear. Let gratitude be the dress that you wear. Dear friends in Christ, it is very easy, even without knowing it or being conscious about it, to be ungrateful and unappreciative for certain things and to certain persons, perhaps because we think we are deserving of them by right or by merit, or perhaps the things are too insignificant to be thankful for. We take them for granted. We have shown ingratitude in very many subtle ways. You have surely heard someone say, Is this all you could give to me? Because they were expecting far much more. Or perhaps they said, What is strange in what he or she has done to me? Why is she my sister? 
Why is he my brother? Why is he my son or daughter? You claim a right to it or have a certain spirit of entitlement. Sometimes we even compare others. What he has done or what she has done. Others have even done better. Consequently, you fail to show appreciation. Sometimes it is when we feel we are deserving of much more than we received. In the gospel passage of today, we find ten lepers and we can split them in two groups. The first group, comprising just one leper, call this group the grateful one. The second group, comprising nine lepers, call these ones the ungrateful ones. All ten of them received the same gift from God, healing of their leprosy. But while one was grateful, nine of them left without coming back to render gratitude to God. And this made Jesus ask, were not all ten made clean? Why is it that only one has returned to render gratitude to God? Now, beloved, let us examine the possible reasons why these nine did not return. First, they were Jews, and St. Luke is very, very specific and categorical when he says the other one who came back was a foreigner, a Samaritan. Why the contrast between the nine who were Jews and the one who was a Samaritan? We may think it was just a detail that was not necessary. No, St. Luke is very, very aware and decides to make us understand that the nine who did not come back were Jews. This means they were from the same country and race as Jesus. Probably, they felt it was their birthright. After all, Jesus was a Jew. He came for them. What had Jesus done that he was not supposed to do? So why should they thank him? Does a child have to thank his mother for giving him food? Is it not her duty? Of what benefit was it having Jesus, so they thought? So he had done nothing but his duty. It was his duty to help his country people, and it was their right to benefit this from him. After all, don't we hear some people say this? When a son or daughter of theirs is appointed to some government office, they feel it is their duty to help their people. And so we hear them say, our own person is on top of the tree. And so we have the right to consume beautiful fruits. So perhaps these nine felt that it was their right. Should Jesus be thanked for helping his own people? If he had helped strangers, was it not natural that he should help his own? Was it not the same Jesus who said he came to heal? Or that his own apostles should go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Should he therefore be thanked for doing his duty? These are important questions. Now, this is where this nine missed it. Yes, beloved, even if it is your father, even if it is your mother or your relative or even your friend, yes, even if they have a duty to perform, Beloved, we should never, never take it for granted. Do not take it as a right or take it for granted because not everyone helps their own nor does their duty. So to find someone who even helps their own, always learn to say thank you. Even if someone who performs their duty, not everyone does, learn always to say thank you. Nothing is too small to be grateful for. What about your friends? What about your parents? Do you thank them? Do you know that there are orphans who have no parents? Do you thank God for your parents? Do you thank God for your good friends? Are you grateful for those who are charitable to you? Or do you take it for granted? Second, these nine failed to evaluate where they were 
before meeting Jesus and where Jesus had brought them to. They had a change of levels. As lepers, they could not even come close to him. They stood far away. In fact, though alive, they were dead. Now they would have quickly evaluated themselves. Look at where Jesus had brought them by healing them. In fact, he had given them life. If they understood where they were before and where they had been, they would have had every reason to thank God, but they failed to see. And this is exactly what happens to us many times. We fail to appreciate the good things that happen to us. We fail to evaluate and to ask ourselves, where was I? Where am I now? And when we do this evaluation, we will see the hand of God in everything and in every step of the way. This is what the one leper did not do. He did not take it for granted. God has no need of our praise. Our prayers of thanksgiving add nothing to his greatness, but rather profit us for salvation. The more we thank him, the more he blesses us. In fact, Chinua Achebe says, an ungrateful child is worse than one's enemy. For the many things God has done for you, Jesus is asking, where are you? He has not seen you. Why have you not come back to give thanks to God? Where are you? He is asking. Why have you not come back to give thanks to God? Or is it that God has done nothing for which you can be thankful? Or is it that what he has done for you is too insignificant? Or do you take it as a right? Or do you take it for granted? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We don't take it for granted, for many have died. We thank you for the gift of health. We thank you for our parents, our siblings, our friends. We thank you for who we are. Lord, for the many things we have taken for granted, or for the many things we have seen as too insignificant and we failed to thank you. Father, we are sorry. Forgive us for the life you have given us, health, food, for the job we have, for the safe travels every day in and out and others have died on those same roads that we have traveled safe, for the services that others render to us, for the love that others show us. Father, we thank you. Let gratitude always be your song. The words thank you should never leave your lips. And so today we pledge ourselves always to be grateful people. Always render gratitude to God and to others for the blessings that you have received. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and you'll see every reason to be thankful to God and to others. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We will never know the worth of what we have until when we would have lost it. Therefore, always appreciate and be thankful.